Well, hello, Yvonne and Karen. Glad that you're both here. And good afternoon to the rest of you that are all on here. I always enjoy seeing little comments. Uh, so if you have anything you want to say or talk or question, please, please comment. Uh, so good to be with you on this uh, Holy Week. Uh, we are we are coming close to the 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 most holiest of days, the the three days of Lent uh, that we really focus on: Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter Sunday. And so. Uh, I am glad that we've had this chance to come together. And so I, my focus the next few days might just be around that. Um, but also know that we're here to check in with each other, to, to be a part of each other's lives, and to uh, just uh, spend time with each other uh, as, we, as we do on a daily basis. Um, and so a couple of announcement type things that uh, I would like to get across. Um, first of all, tomorrow uh, we have our Monday Thursday service. That's going to happen at uh, 7 p.m. Um, we'll have that here on Facebook. So I invite you here for that. We're going to celebrate uh, Holy Communion at that service. Uh, so I reference you to a, a video that I uploaded last night. Uh, that you can uh, kind of see the, the directions on how we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do that uh, Monday, Thursday, as well as on Easter. So I invite you to prepare yourself uh, for that. Um, Good Friday, um, we will focus ourselves on the, the cross of Good Friday that I have referenced throughout Lent. Um, and that will be at 7 p.m. as well. And then our Easter Sunday celebration, 10 a.m., different time, I know, but uh, we'll, we'll be here together at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday as we celebrate the risen Christ. Um, so lots of opportunities for us to get together, for you and I to be the church together. Um, one other thing I do want to mention, um, and I, I don't often do it, uh, but... In this time of um, uncertainty, in this time where we can't be together in our church, um, uh, there are ways that you can continue to support that ministry. Um, whether you're a member of our church, a friend of our church, whether this online ministry has touched you um, on the Facebook page right at the very top, there's a way to give online um, if you would like to support us uh, in that way. Well, I was looking at scripture for today, and like I said, I, I kind of want to take this, this journey uh, to uh, Holy Week. Um, and so I came across a text that we, we read not too long ago in church, um, but this is kind of uh, the testimony of John the Baptist um, from the Gospel of John um, it's where he says, I'm the voice crying out in the wilderness. And then he comes to this verse, which I think will, will ties in quite well to where Monday Thursday is going to take us. But from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 29 says this, The day, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of of the world. And if we think about that, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, at the cross of Christ, sin reaches its climax. Good Friday, sin reaches its climax. It's probably one of the most terrible displays that ever took place in Calvary. But it was the Lamb of of God who takes away the sin of the world. We say those words every time we come together, every time we partake in the Lord's Supper, which is one of the main focuses of Monday Thursday, which happens tomorrow. And that is that Jesus is the Lamb, that he is the one who comes 
and every day walks with us and every day is with us. And he's the one that takes away the sin of the world. He's the one that went on that cross and that dies for us. He is the true redeemer of the world. And so as we come and focus ourselves a little bit more on what this week means for us as Christians, we have this kind of precursor to what Monday Thursday will bring us. And that is to know that Jesus is this lamb, that he's going to take it all for us, that he's going to sacrifice everything on a cross for you and I. Now, there's not often a lot of talk of what happens between Palm Sunday and Monday Thursday, but we do know that he spends time with his disciples, that he walks with them, that he spends last moments with them and prepares them to come together in that upper room. And that upper room is where you and I will come together tomorrow, where we will sit around that table. And so this verse gives us something to think about as we go into that, to know that he is the, the Lord and that he is the Lamb of God and that he takes away all of our sins. You see, Christ comes to us, and he loves us, and he cares about us. And although it was a dark time in his life, he knew that what he was doing was for us. And so we can take comfort in that, not just simply in days of anxiety and all of that, but in our everyday life. No matter where we are or what we're doing or how we're living, we know that he is the lamb that takes away the sin. And so I want you to think about that today and until we come together tomorrow, about the sacrifice that he made for us and how we can focus on what Monday Thursday is going to bring. And how we can focus on his new commandment to love one another. And how we focus on that cross that he goes up on. Know that we're loved. Know that we're cared about. Know that God is here amongst us. And as we face uncertain times, we know that there is footprints that walk alongside of us. And that is our Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, you sent your son to us to live amongst us, to teach us, to show us the way. And now here we are, the final week of his life. all that we've learned, all that we have heard him say. This is it. This is the final time. Prepare our hearts, God, to remember that he is the lamb, that he did take away our sin, and that he did walk amongst us. Father God, we We've spent this time of Lent giving ourselves to him so that he can take everything up on that cross. Father God, I pray that we can continue to realize the importance of Holy Week, that we can realize the importance of these last days of your son's life. And that we know no matter what we have going on in our lives, that you're with us, that he's with us.
may we always be reminded that he is the truth and the life, that he is our cornerstone, that he is our redeemer. Father God, I continue to lift up to you those that are hurting, both physically and mentally. May you be an ever-present part of their lives. May they feel your spirit and know that you are wrapping your arms around them. Father God, we have those amongst us that are continuing a healing process And so I ask that you continue to heal them, that you heal their bodies, give them strength again. God, there are people that are feeling isolated and alone. Be on their hearts, God. May they know that they aren't alone, that you're with them, and that they have friends and family and a community of faith surrounding them. Father God, for those times where we just want to break down and cry, may we know that you hear what's on our hearts. As we continue to face this crisis of Corona, we continue to lift up those that work the front lines, those that work in the hospitals, those that can't isolate themselves away from the world. Continue to be their refuge. God, for those who may not have a relationship with your son, may you bring the Holy Spirit in them that they can feel in their hearts how much he loves them, how much you love them, and that they turn their heart to Jesus and accept him into their life. Good and gracious God, continue to hear what's on our hearts when we don't know what to say. And give us those moments in our lives where we can just sit and listen to you. And know that you are ever present. And that you are always there, surrounding us with your love. All of this, God, we lift to you through your Son, who is the Lamb that takes away all of our sin, who taught us so boldly to pray these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, dear friends, thank you again for taking some time out of your day to be here with me. And as I said yesterday, think about those The last time you were in church, that you sat next to, that you drank coffee with, that you see on a weekly basis, find time to reach out to them. Let them know that you're here. And as always, if you need somebody, please call me, message me, whatever, whatever way you can reach me, and I'm here for you. And remember that you and I together, 
We are the church. We are the church, whether we're in the building or out of the building, we make this church who it is. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I look forward to having you a part of our worship services. And as a reminder, if you know somebody that is not on Facebook, let them know that they can go to YouTube and they can see all of our services there. So, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. May God bless you. May God's peace be within you. And may he continue to wrap himself around you. You are loved by one another, by God, by me, and by the church. Have a great day.